we all here? Good morning, good morning. Looking at these skies at the beginning of the day, you can't really tell because the camera is so blown out that it could be a blue sky, it could be overcast. It's clouds today. We're cloudy here in Tokyo and the forecast is for tons and tons of rain. I think it's 90% chance of rain starting at around 2 o'clock or so. This is not what the bars and restaurants want to hear for the weekend. It's one of the last clear weekends of the year and they want just good weather. Okay, where do we go? What's the white truck there? It's clearly some kind of garbage truck, but not a regular garbage truck. The guy at the Korean restaurant. Yeah, this is the guy. This is the garbage man for the Korean restaurant. He hasn't got his blue truck. I wonder if there's mechanical problems with it. This is the same guy. This is the guy who hits our clutch sound with his blue truck. Anyway, let him be. Not sure what he's doing today, bringing stuff in. Anyway, none of our business. Let's leave him alone. <laughs> could be. Maybe there's a huge amount of stuff and it won't fit in his normal blue truck. I don't know. No idea. It could be. The blue truck stuff has to be all the same kind of garbage. It's crushable and it's going to go to the incinerator, something like that. Maybe today there's different stuff that uh, can't go in the incinerator. I don't know. Okay, 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 okay. We do have a block. We're still on our carving. We're not, oops, not that one. We're still on our carving. It's not quite finished yet. But before we do, there are, as usual, a couple more priority jobs that have to be done. Paper is out today. There's two, two trucks. Two, uh, two trucks. <laughs> there are two bags of paper out today. One is Ishikawa-san. She's doing a batch of prints of our famous Tsuru, the crane in front of the sunrise. She's doing a batch of those. She started the deal. She finished them today. And then who else is here? Dei Chan. And she's doing the final, final, final batch of prints of this year's ED series. And she may be finished today or she may be finished Monday morning. These are the prints that will need to be shipped on December 21st. And that's it for our year for the, uh, for the subscription series. There's a reprinting going on, the whole thing, because people are going to want this uh, in the future, next year, and we're going to, there'll be more sign-ups starting in January. So the crew has already started. They've got the next printing done for versions 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. I think number 6 is what's up next. So, Okay, as you can see, it's going to be some embossing today. What's this? Oh, 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 a nice little present for me this morning. This is from Mita Murasa. The, one of the local printers. We don't use too many of the local printers of what the local Kumia, but we do a few. And look what Mita Murasan has brought me this morning. Uh, he brought this over last night. He has done another, look at this, all exactly the same. And there's something interesting. Those of you who know this print, there's something missing on this. There's something missing on this. Chocolate egg for the first one who comes up with it. So, Tom 1060, the giant chocolate egg, there's no blank spot. The block is getting old. The blocks are wearing, I was gonna say wearing out, the blocks are wearing in very nicely. I don't know how many we've made, I'd have to look it up, four or 500 or so by now. And the block is wearing to the point where all the hardness and softness are getting sort of leveled out. It's on its way to dying, but no problem. A block like this, just flat, no fine lines. Before I sent it out to him, I put it under the scope and I touched up some of these lines. Touched up meaning I cleared out some of these lines a bit because they had been getting a bit... What's the word? When you've got lines, they get worn out, so then the top of the carved line gets worn onto a rounded surface. But with a flat block, the other way. When you've got a flat area that you're printing and you rub on top of it, the corners sometimes get a little bit round, but also what happens if the wood is soft? As you're pressing and pressing and pressing, the wood can get pushed out and expanded. 
and the part here, when you've got this thin line, the wood on each side can actually get stretched and expanded so it starts to pinch, excuse me, pinch that line. So we've made enough of these now that he's, we looked at it before he started. He said, look, before I start, can you maybe take a look at this? And I did. I threw it under the scope, and some of these lines I cleared out a little bit. If we, we, if we get close enough without, with the focus, I don't know. Look at this. They are clean. He has done a very, very, very nice job on this. The other thing about this is, you know, of course, that these are all worth $1,800 each. <laughs> I would love, the guy who paid that on the auction a couple of weeks ago, somebody paid, I don't want to tell the story again, maybe the chat's already talking about it. Somebody in an auction house paid for one of these, my prints, which a person A had bought and sold B on auction, and it went for $1,800. Some person with a lot of money who was desperate for a Christmas present, I guess. And I would love to see that person's face if they were watching now. Here they are. I think there's 60 in this batch. I gave him 60 sheets of paper. There's no cut corners. He has turned up 60 good prints. Little shadow of the white. Little shadow of it. What's 60 times $1,800? Do I know how many prints came out of the block set overall? I mean, how many have we made so far? It's not secret. Let me have a look. Take a second for me to find it here. One sec. Manager page, manager system, blah, 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 blah. Inventory. Just one sec. Let's look it up. At the hot spring, 372 have been sold so far. It's not all that many. 372, it's a bestseller for us. We sell it from 40 dollars $40 each, and 372 copies have left. I can't lose them. They've got to go out to Ome this weekend, so they're ready for packing on Monday. Okay. You can see what's going on. It's going to be an embossing morning. Before I can start carving, I have to start embossing. No chocolate eggs for guessing who sent this. We all know that. I'm going to rip off the tape. Are you ready with your headphones? Three, two, one. One more time. Three, two, one. And one more time. Three, two, one. It's, of course, Kubota-san. Kubota-san has bought out the, the Tokyo stock of white tape. Also, those of you, some of you might understand what kind of print is inside here. You don't know the, the I've got from Kubota-san here in two batches. Do you remember a couple of weeks ago? It's quiz day. It's quiz day every day on this stream. It's Kubota. Kubota. It's an unusual Japanese name in that it's made of three Japanese characters, three Chinese characters. Kubota. It's a common name. It's not rare at all. It's a very common name. Yes, somebody's got it. One for the book. Not one for the book, but a bunch of them for the book. So these are which kind of prints? These are Ukiyo-e Heroes prints. Chicken Meister's got it too. So thank you guys. Guys, gals, whatever, I don't know. People. We are preparing stock of our Heroes prints. Every time we send some out for reprinting these days, we also make some extra copies, getting ready for the next time we publish a book of the Heroes Prince. K 
Kubota, as in tractors. Yes, it's a common, common name. It's not a rare name at all. It's like, whatever, Smith or something, I don't know. Oh, that is not going to pull off. Kubota san, I have failed you. Let's just cut both. They're going in the garbage. Anyway, they're too short to recycle. Someone, John, saying it looks as clean as when the blocks were new. Well, I don't know if the cleanliness is anything to do with the blocks were new, but yes, yes, we're taking care of these blocks. You know, you know the drill. We've talked about it many, many times. We only print 60, 80 copies at a time. The wood stays hard. We demand that the printers take care of their brushes, use soft brushes. We don't use ground sumi for our key blocks. There's three or four very, very important key points for us about keeping these blocks in good shape. We have cut corners, two cut corners on the back, and this will probably be his test print. Yeah, you can see, look at this, smeared colors. Oh, maybe he dropped it on the block, look at that, hoo, 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 hoo. how embarrassing for Mr. Kubota. Let's get going. I have to emboss these. They have to get out on their way to Ome over the weekend. We won't be selling these here from our website. It's, of course, through Jed. Jed is the only dealer for the Ukiyo-e Heroes prints online. Let me get organized here. Oh, this reminds me. Did you see the Instagram post that you know, Ayano-san made yesterday? When I was doing, after the stream on Thursday morning, Ayano-san came in at 9 o'clock, and she had seen me doing that peel at 9 o'clock. And when I saw her after the stream about 10 o'clock, she said, it's really too bad I missed that, because I really wanted to make a video of this. So I said, Ayano-san, I have six more to do. Get your camera. So she did. She took a, a short movie video. And it's up on Instagram for those who, who uh, didn't see it yesterday, of Dave doing another peel. Okay, double check. Bull Kubota. Let's get this all set up. What do we need to see? I'm going to be here. Maybe I'll need to make the paper moist. Maybe not. I don't know. Let's have a look. That's here. This is here. The finished prints are going to go up there. Let's try this. Would it be possible to post on Facebook? I guess. And I'll tell you what, drop a note. Drop a note to Ayana-san and ask her about this. We do have a Facebook account too, I guess. Annabelle San. <coughs> if you drop a note to info at mokohankan.com, it'll get to Ayana-san. So ask, just ask her directly. Okay, let me get the cut corner one for a test here. If that goes in there and that goes in there, is this going to be... I think it's looking good. I think it's exactly okay. Let's roll. Do we need to moisten the paper? Kubota-san, You've, you've seen me do this job where I moisten the paper on a blue pad, come back and do this. And I've been uh, testing back and forth. We did this last one. I did some moistened and some not moistened and looked at them. And it really seems they're okay. Kubota-san has self-calendared this paper before printing it. You know what we're talking about. Sometimes we put our paper through the press to make the front surface really smooth before we do the printing. We like to do that so that the colors can become nice and smooth with a minimum of fierce rubbing on the back. 
So Kubota-san has learned about this paper, the Takenaga paper that we send, and he self-calendars. He's got a big black, a blank block. He puts the paper on the back and he rubs the back with a very hard baron until it's flat, which calendars the front surface. And we can tell he's done this because it means that there's rubbing from the baron in white areas around the outside. Normally, barren marks only get on the back of the print in the areas where there are color. But in this case, the barren marks run right on the outside. So he's calendared the whole thing. Let's try one here and see if it needs moistening or if it looks okay without it. Oh, we've got good bite. We are really, we're okay, we're okay. We have great, great bite. Let's look at this. Push out, pull in. We have good, rich bite. It's no problem. It has, it's here. Horiburu, Horiburu, carving by bull, Suri Kubota Kenichi. Looks like we have something good. Let's roll. Oh, look at these questions, my God. Somebody's been customs duties for Canada. We, we have no control over it. We really don't, can't stop that. They, they stop package one, they don't stop package number two. I don't know. We, of course, have to put the value on it. Sometimes people ask us, hey, please put the lower value on the package. We can't do that for a few reasons. One is if we are caught doing that by the post office here, which does have export control on packages, we are in serious trouble. And the second is we are actually not able to do that. I mean, we can't physically do it because our accounting system ties in to the post office system. Our accounting system sends the information on any given package to the post office, which creates the label and the customs invoice and everything else and then that gets printed out and goes into the package on the front. We don't print the post office labels. I mean, we have to physically print them, but we don't make the data. This is all part of the new international flow of goods around the world. We have no way to just write, instead of $100, we write $20. We can't do that. Our accounting system talks directly to the post office and to the overseas customs. It's all directly linked together. So if you had to pay customs duties on something, it's, I mean, the new way is going to be, we have to pay customs and duties on everything, all the stuff. Anything you're getting through that doesn't have it is simply lucky at this point. A lot of that new system is way, way easier because it means our workflow at this end. Somebody goes to the shopping cart, I'm sleeping. They go to the shopping cart, buy something, PayPal, click, it comes in. The paperwork is ready. The packaging people just print it out from the post office data, the PDF, and away it goes. It's gloriously simple for us at this end. Do a small change in the software, yeah. In other words, fake the data. I told you, I am not going to lie to customs, period. I'm not going to do that. Run a double set of books. <laughs> Sorry, no. Oh, Zoom, it's okay, sorry, sorry, sorry. Hi, hi, hi. Somebody's mentioned seeing ads on the Mokanka website. Are you seeing that now? I don't see any ads at the moment. We had, an, uh, any, again, during the night, there was a raid.
I said the new post office system was bad. It has been endless trouble, of course. There are parts it's not ready with. It won't do Europe yet. So when I'm talking about that wonderfully uh, automated system, which I connect to the post office, which connects to customs, it's not ready for Europe. So we are not able to use the post office system to send packages to Europe that are marked as customs and duty paid already. So it's very much a work in progress. Have I missed something? Yes, sorry. Is that the vegetable man? I can't see out the door. It's just on, just too far down. I can't see him. Someone's asking about wood, and I need three quarter inch. I don't really know inches, but three quarters of an inch. If you're using solid wood, not plywood, that sounds like a the normal thickness. Traditionally here, the wood block thickness for making ukiyo-e prints is 23 millimeters, is the traditional thickness. <laughs> Excuse me, when you're using solid wood. I was talking about the uh, internet scam. Stop serving the website on the default Apache host IP. We're not. We have our own IP address. I'm not quite sure what you're asking there. All of our domains, woodblock.com, mokohankan.com, mokohankan JP, we all have, you know, they all have their own IP address, their own domain. Let me read more into this later. I'll say sorry, rather than blow you away. Thanks for commenting. Coffee drinker. Let me look into this. Thank you. The default Apache host IP. We have a different IP address for each domain, I believe. The dragon lady that we carved, will it be part of the new series? Yes, it's January's print. <laughs> January's print. <laughs> Thank you. 
someone says you're supposed to be a boomer and not so tech savvy. What does that mean? Who built the internet anyway? Millennials? Who sent Apollo to the moon? Not even boomers. The previous generation did that. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> What's the connection? <laughs> I can't catch it all, I'm sorry, I can't catch it. For those of you who don't know, this is one of the Ukiwe Heroes prints. It's one from the very first campaign. This was back in 2012. We put seven Ukiwe Hero prints into that campaign, and this is one of them. Jed calls it the Hero Rests. We mentioned last time I showed you this print, we got quite some strong blowback from a number of fans. Or I didn't, Jed did. People wrote to Jed, Jed, what are you doing? You can't do that. And as we mentioned before on this, this stream, the problem is Jed had drawn the sword, and I guess a true samurai would never rest his sword on the ground, at least not in that fashion. And Jed got quite some blowback for that point. And of course it represents the character known as Link. This was from the original Legend of Zelda, Zelda issue. Nintendo has never spoken to us about this. I don't know. With an image like this, I can't imagine. Well, we've got the, the what, what does Nintendo call it? Triforce. Have they trademarked that? I don't know. I think they would have trouble with that because I think this is also a very traditional Japanese mon, one of the symbols from Japanese culture from way, way, way back. And I have no idea if they are or were able to, uh, to trademark that. That's about the only point of contention that could be made with our version of this print, I believe. That's the wide group. And now we have the normal size. Same thing, but the normal size and shape. I can't get enough of this, you know, he's done such a good job. This guy, uh, we talked about it every time, Kubota-san, the machine. He just rolls on, rolls on. One sheet after the other, identical. And he does a job like this in just a few days. He's making a fortune, because we pay really well for this stuff. And he is so fast and so consistent. 
he's just racking it up. And he's, I'm 71 now, so he must be 74 or maybe 75, I don't know, uh, his birthday. And he just rolls along, rolls along, rolls along. It's chilly here this morning. So what's happening out there? I think these might be the little New Year decorations going up. The guy who runs our Merchants Association here, the guy who was the Don last year, and they've passed on the same tradition, a, a merchants group like we have here on the street, we must put up some kind of New Year decoration. It's absolutely cultural, a must-do thing. We can't do nothing. As it happens, there are no major, major shops on our street. For example, Mitsukoshi Department Store, they put up a kado matsu, the giant pine tree bamboo decorations in a basket. They put those on each side of their front door, costing huge, huge sums of money. Shops do whatever level of New Year decorations, depending on their budget and their scale, whatever. We ourselves don't do it here, but the street as a whole has to do something and years back, this is before I came here, they sort of settled on what to do. <laughs> and it's embarrassing. When I first saw it, I thought, give me a break, guys. Surely it would be better to do nothing. They get, I guess they go to the shrine, they pay a little bit of money, and they get the shrine guys to bless a bunch of little straw ropes. And underneath each of the light posts, they climb up there on the ladder. I guess this is what he's doing now. And they tie a little straw rope, and they hang it down. And that's all. It's a tiny little piece of straw rope. Then at one end of the street and the other end of the street, they put a straw rope across the road and they hang a little piece of white paper. You know, the white paper with the zigzag fold that, again, they have gone to the shrine and they've blessed this little piece of white paper. And it's the absolute bare rock bottom total minimum that anybody can spend on a, on a New Year's decoration for a commercial street. There's other streets that have done the whole thing. Combined Christmas, they've got illuminations. <laughs> we, we don't do this. And I have no say in this whatsoever. I am a very, very, very junior, junior, junior person. Let's keep an eye on him. When we see somebody going up that ladder, let's keep an eye on it. Let me know when he goes up there. And we can have a look at him tying this little piece of string on the top. It's, as I said, it's embarrassing. It's not embarrassing because nobody even notices it. You know, nobody's going to come in here and think, geez, Dave's so cheap. That's all he wants to do for a New Year decoration. Nobody, nobody, nobody is going to think that. <laughs> Mostly because nobody will even notice those things. You know? Someone's asking next week KFC for me. No, I don't. Uh, I don't eat that stuff. Sorry. So. And I certainly can't feel any Christmas spirit from KFC. My God, what a masterpiece of marketing! Although I think that's a double-edged sword. It's a masterpiece of marketing in that everybody here in Japan thinks fried chicken and KFC fried chicken for Christmas. But what that means is, for the couple of weeks after Christmas, nobody goes there. Of course, you know, you, you're late. Like, you don't have... Okay, somebody's a coffee drinker here. You're passing some information. Thank you very much. I will actually have a look at this later on and see what's going on. If there's inter interesting information for us, we will have a look. Thank you very much for, for helping with this. If there's more information that you don't want to put in public, info at mokohankan.com. I'd love to hear from anybody who knows more about this. So thank you very much for hanging on here.
to skip one. I'm trying to watch too many things at the same time here. I've got that. Got that. Nobody on the ladder yet? Someone's asking about the flask. The light at the moment is not turned on. I use this when I'm carving, but it's too much trouble to take it away right now. It's just hanging up there. We'll use it in a few minutes. I'm, after I finish this stack of prints, I will be carving and you will then see. Technical question. Is there a yellow block under that green at the bottom? Yes. The yellow that you see in the middle here extends under the entire sky ground. It doesn't go into the tree area or the character area. But the yellow that you see, in fact, the... the Yellow and the green are the same block. It is a background block that goes under everything that is, as I said, sky and, and ground. The yellow goes right to the top and the yellow goes right to the bottom. We can safely put a pale yellow under a green. It does affect it. It changes the tint of the green a tiny bit, but we can put it under safely. It's not a, it's not a color that is fighting with it. Yellow is part of green anyway. And we can safely put the yellow under the orange. Yellow is part of orange anyway, in a normal sense. So yes, instead of trying to do a yellow bit in the middle here, Kubota San will have just printed a pale yellow on that entire block first, and then done two green gradations. One green gradation up here quite lightly, and then a second green gradation darker at the bottom. It's like one of those sky gradations, but turned upside down. For the flask and stuff, a lot of carvers these days don't use this. They simply get a strip light, put it in front of the bench, and the light being a strip shows, uh, it diffuses by itself. It's certainly a way to do it. I don't want a fluorescent light shining in my eyes all day long. I really don't like those things. I'm happy, comfortable with this. It's sometimes difficult finding incandescent bulbs. And honestly speaking, when it gets to the point where we can't use incandescents anymore, another light bulb would do fine here. It's just light. There's nothing magic about this. And we don't do this for printing, so the color tone of the bulb is not relevant. The printers would not do something like this. The printers have their own lighting, which of course is color is a consideration for the lighting that they use. Someone's mentioning shop hours, thank you. I know it's getting a bit quiet here now, and we are now seeing what may be a return to the pre-pandemic pattern. The past six, seven, eight weeks have been a tsunami of people coming through here. 
This was obviously the people, the pent up demand for people that wanted to come to Japan but who couldn't come. That crowd maybe is now flushed through. So we are now back to a sort of a normal pattern. And traditionally for us, the middle couple of weeks of December were always very, 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 very quiet. Tons of people come to Japan for the, the maple leaves and stuff like that through October into November and into early December. Also, a bunch of people come to Japan at the end of the year. They've got a winter holiday from their own work, so they would come to Japan from maybe December the 24th, 5th or whatever, over for a couple of weeks, and they go skiing up to Hokkaido or in and around. But this particular time, the second and third week, the middle of December, is very, very low tourist time in, in pre-pandemic. Pre now I don't know, but we're seeing the same thing. The last few days have been very quiet. The staff has been doing lots of background support work. So today, even though it's Saturday and Sunday, the combination of a rainy day and the middle of December means we are probably going to have a very quiet day in the shop today. And that suits me just fine. Yeah, John's saying March, my God, March, April. Can I start crying now or? If there are no, you know, disasters with the pandemic, new virus alterations that cause major trouble again, if we don't see that, then for us next spring is going to be, I don't know what word to use, titanically overwhelming. You know? Yeah, John says just keep printing, just keep printing. It's, it's all we can do. It's all we are doing. Someone's asking again what we're doing here. This is embossing. Let's zoom it again so you can see it. It's almost finished. Not the most interesting part of my work, I'm sorry. Let's zoom in. For those who don't know who haven't seen this. Over on one edge of the paper here, we are printing the carver and printer's names. And again, it says the character for Hori, carving, and it's my name, Buru, which makes the word Horibur. And then it's Suri printing, and in this case, it's Kubota Kenichi. And we are doing this by the use of a polymer plate. It's a little plastic plate. We don't try and carve these. No point in, in doing that. And there you are. There you see it backwards. This is relief printing, so it's backwards. It's raised. It's a little bumpy. It's about half a millimeter high. And we order these from printing companies. Anybody who does, you know, a little commercial local printing company can make these. And there you are. You can see it. Hori, this is backwards, mirror, Hori Buru. Suri Kubota Kenichi. Someone's asking, will I ever do another? What, Dave Bolt talks about life. You mean the, the meaning of life thing? Yeah, I've got a thousand, whatever. I got a bunch of them lined up. Dave's so a touch an expert on the meaning of life, he can't organize his own life. I don't know what to say. <laughs> There is a video now. Next Tuesday, when the shop is closed, we're putting all the lights up and I will be recording the year-end video. Our year-end update video will be recorded in the shop here on Tuesday morning. If all goes well, it might be online Tuesday night, Tokyo time. If not, it might be Wednesday. That will be our year-end update video. It'll be the perfect announcement of the two new subscription series that we're starting in January. And the web page for ordering the subscription prints will also go open. The plan is this is happening December the 20th, next Tuesday. How many prints is a plastic strip good for? I, I have no idea. There's no discernible wear. On all of our things that we do here, we've got wood blocks. 
that do wear out. And they wear out 99.9% .9 not from the action of the rubbing on top. They wear out from the brushing. When the wood block gets wet, we've got pigment, we brush, brush, brush. It's abrasive. The hair runs against soft wood again and again. And I guess each time you put the brush across the wood at the molecular level, stuff wears out. So most of our block wear happens from the brushing of the printers. Even though they take care to keep their brushes as soft as possible, it inevitably happens. There's almost no block wear from the vertical pressure of the rubbing tool. So this little piece of plastic, it's going to do this. I've had the same one, Bull Kubota. This is the same one that did the original Ukiyo Heroes back in 2012, or whenever Kubota-san came on board for us. Wear and tear, negligible. Would it be possible to apply the pigment by airbrush? I don't know, you tell me. What we need, and the reason we do it the traditional way is we simply want the pigment to be left on the raised surfaces. In Western type printmaking where they use oil, they use a roller and they roll across and you don't get the whole block black, the areas that are below sea level don't get inked and they roll their roller on. You can do that with ink oil-based ink. For the water-based ink that we use, when you try rolling it on, I can't say it can't be done, but it just doesn't seem to work. It doesn't properly cover the surface of the wood. This is not something I have explored extensively because we, of course, we follow the traditional patterns that work to create beautiful results. I'm not really interested in, in uh, screwing around and exploring other alternatives. This actually does work for us. But the key difference there, we're using water-based pigments with a brush. Western work uses oil-based pigments applied with a roller. Well, John, say so you're putting pigment over the lock. It doesn't matter how it gets there. It doesn't matter how it gets here, but it certainly matters what level of pigment and how it's left on the top of the wood and how it rolls around the corners and stuff like that. Psst. Spray it on. Maybe it works. I don't know. What would be the advantage? I wouldn't wear out the wood. I don't know, maybe, maybe you just reinvented Japanese wood box printmaking. I don't know. <laughs> oh, the ladders. Is it light bulb guys then? Is it, it's light bulbs. It's not the New Year's decorations. This is, are these the guys who did it from the top of the truck the other day? He's gonna rest the ladder on that light. Let me, let me slightly move the camera back in one sec. It's like Kita and Yaji, the two guys from the Hisakurike story. Someone's asking about CNC for creating blocks. We have an item in our shop. Our catalog number five, a print called Aspen Grove, was made with CNC blocks to cut the block. If you follow a link to our catalog, look up number five, and in the description you'll see a link to some blog posts that describe how the print was made using CNC. We have tried this. We've been in here. Oh, 
石川さん、はい、あの今日あの鶴でしょ。うん、そうそう。はい。やってます。OK。えっとねあのもう一つですがあの今週あのごめんごめんますますますますますあのえっとね僕とアイアムさんが二人でいろいろ数理しに。考えて出してますが、うんうん、ちょっとダブルになったんです。三田森さんに年賀状を出したんです。<笑>で、石川さん、冷凍庫の中に石川さんの年賀状が用意してある紙もありますが、今、板が三田森さんが預かって,預かってます。預かってます。もうやってないよ、私。もうあれ捨てろって言ったんだって。<笑>でも何、ちょっと別な紙、あの乾かした時の年賀状の見本。うんうんと何白い使ってないケーブルそれから冷凍庫にも石川年賀状のパックもありますあれ私のあ自分の<笑>そうかじゃあ今日出すなかった今日ごめんごめんじゃあ今いいうちのわしと思ったんですからオッケーじゃあ全然問題ないオッケーオッケーじゃあだでも出してないんですからどうぞ自分で出してください鶴だけ出てるんですね今ツール出したんですが、おおまいガール、年賀状もう一つのパックありますから、どうする三田さんがいたまってますから、怒ってるかどうか。ああ、ハッピーニュース、ハッピーニュース。それから、まあ今、ストリーム中ですから、じゃあ後で話します。あの、あのユーチンの本の話。ちょっと悲しい話ありますから、いやいや、悪くない。あのハッピーになりますから、後で話します。今、ストリームでちょっと気になりますから。じゃあ、どうも、ブルさん、元気いや悪い噂ばっかり聞いてる。ありますよ、ありますよ。そう、あ、あとで、あとで話します。はい、はい、今日。私、石川さん、one of our in-house printers、been with us for eleven years, twelve years, I'm not sure. Is this the same bulb then that they tried to change last week but didn't do it? Whatever, you guys know more about this than I do. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> they changed the outer bulb. Well, they sort of changed one of them just now, okay? Ah, so good, so good. So last time they could only reach the lower one but not the higher one. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Come to our Twitch channel, Japanese Printmaking, and watch. Actually, the same thing that's happening here, you know, is. It might be a bit of a stretch to make this comparison, but years ago when I was in making the My Solitudes print series, I did the thing where I went to three areas. I had a camping space in a forest near a river and near the ocean. And my rule was simple I stayed 24 hours at each of the seasons in those places. And my rule was I put my little tent up and I never went more than 10 meters from the tent. Didn't explore, didn't walk around, didn't geek out. I sat quietly near the tent. The theory being that if you sit still outside long enough, stuff will happen. I mean, whatever, a, a bug will walk along, you know, a bird will come because you're quiet, all kinds of stuff. You know, things happen when you just watch one thing carefully. And then someone else I read, people that were uh, uh, figuring out how many species are in any given area or something, and rather than look widely, They look closely. They do this experiment. They fence off like one square meter or something and then dig and dig and dig and dig and dig closer, 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 closer. And you find like 10 million species inside one square meter or whatever. And this is this camera is this. Japan is huge. Tokyo is huge. We've got one little camera with one little view of one little street. And stuff happens. <laughs> it's, <laughs> it's not earth shaking stuff. But there are stories. There are stories. Okay, we're, we're done this. We're done this. These prints can now, I will check them one more time because I re haven't really checked through them carefully here. I trust Kubota san, but they still have to get checked. And then tonight or today's Saturday, tomorrow afternoon, these will go out to Ome ready for transshipping off to Jed. 
he will sign and seal them and he will put them on his website and he will send some back to us for the uh, shopping in our shop. Trial cams, you mean trail cam. I think you spelled trail wrong. The trail cams for watching wildlife, yes. This is the Asaksa Dokdori trail cam. We should use it with an infrared camera. Then at night people can walk along and you can see their bright eyes. <laughs> I really shouldn't start carving this. I'm in no mood for delicate, careful carving right now. Not at all. Can I put this down? There really isn't much action. It's just two dudes with a ladder. If something starts to happen, let me know and we can put it up again. Construction has started, so let me pull down the outside audio. There's construction everywhere outside, absolutely everywhere. The guys across the street renovating the little bar, they seem to have finished, but off to the right where we can't see with the camera, they're replacing the outside of that building. Now the building that went up just a couple of months ago, scaffolding is up and yesterday, and they're pulling all the outside surface off and they're putting some kind of new outside on the building. Also through the main front doors yesterday, I saw them, they took in a stack, oh, I don't know, a hundred sheets of drywall. So it's gone. That's the way they do it here. They build a building with basic structure on it and then somebody rents it and they rip it apart and build it to what they want. It's absolutely insane. The inside of that building is now being, yesterday it was gutted, the inside of that building. All the brand new stuff that was put on that building inside has been ripped off and they are now building new drywall counters, you name it, whatever, for the new restaurant that's going in there. And the outside paneling has already been ripped off. I saw them trashing it yesterday and they're putting something new up. It's extremely wasteful. It's unbearable. I've seen it happen here around Asaksa time and time and time again. We've told the story. When we rented the first floor here, we were upstairs second and third. We rented the first floor. The guy took his stuff out and then a construction crew came in and Cameron and I caught them that morning. We came in to go upstairs to our shop and they'd already broken the front door and ripped it out and they had the first one third of the floor ripped up to show the concrete. We yelled and screamed and stopped, no, 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 we're coming in here. And they're like, we've got the contract, they got this place. They were going to rip all the floor up, they were going to take out the hung ceiling, they were going to rip everything off the wall back to the concrete. And we screamed and stopped them right there. And the guys, this, we've been paid to do this and I got out my wallet. Okay, let's sit down. How much do I need to pay you to stop doing this? And they looked at each other and we did a deal. And I paid them right there cash. They fixed up what they had done, got in their truck and drove away. No, actually what we did, we let them finish the floor because once it was one third gone, we didn't want to be stuck with left with a half of a floor. So we let them finish the floor, told them to finish the floor, leave the walls, leave the electricity, leave the lights, leave the toilet, leave the air conditioner, leave everything. And they did, we paid them to go away. But if we hadn't seen them, if I hadn't been here that day, if it had been a day off, they would have gutted it to the concrete. It's, that's it. Our lease is skeleton. And it works all, all commercial leasing here in Tokyo 
is what's called a skeleton lease. You rent the, the concrete structure, no toilet, no wiring, no nothing. The basic feed, the water is there into the building, the sewage exit is there, the electricity hangs outside. That's all you get. You build everything yourself. It's called skeleton. And you are required by the terms of the lease when you leave to rip it all back. And those two dudes had been paid by the departing tenant to rip it all out. It makes sense in some cases. If, you know, like, whatever, if, if you're coming into a place that was a restaurant and then you're going to make a woodblock print shop, there isn't going to be much that overlaps. You want that stuff out of the way. And you have hired your architect to design the thing from scratch. And he's done that. He's designed it from scratch. Under those circumstances, when you've got a ton of money to put into it, it makes sense. Get that crap out of the way so we can build our new business in here. In my case, of course we didn't want to do that. We wanted to use as much as possible of what was already here. But the system is the system, and on it rolls. And we are obligated, when we leave, to take out not only everything we've done, but to take out the stuff that those two dudes were supposed to take out, the air conditioner, the toilet, everything. We're supposed to throw it all away. We probably won't, because we will probably be the last tenant in this building. It's on its last legs. And what's going to happen here, there will be an earthquake that's a little bit too strong. It's going to crack some of the walls, and this building will be condemned. And at that point, that's the landlord's problem. I don't have to worry about taking out my toilet, because the building will be demolished. It's in the lease. It's in the lease. We rented this skeleton. We expected a concrete box. We build everything. We take it out, leaving the concrete box for the next person. Did they finish their light bulb changing? I didn't see what's happening. So is the touching of the nose when you refer to yourself? Did I do that? And we, did I do that? I don't know. You tell me. Is it David? Is it Canada? Is it Japan? I have no idea. Too self-conscious. Too. The first floor was a jeweler's shop before us. Before that, it was a ramen restaurant. And this was fun. Once the floor was gone, those two guys had ripped up the floor, we could see where the loop counter was. You know those old American diners that you went in? It was a Coca-Cola button outside. You went in, and there was a loop counter. And you sat on the outside with your stools, and the waitress came up and down inside. That was the structure, and we could see this on the floor, the concrete floor, where the counter had been. So before the jewelry shop, it was a ramen shop. And before that, it was a very, very high-class Inoshishi Ryori, boar meat restaurant with private rooms upstairs and all kinds of stuff. There's a long, long history in this building. It's 9.04. Let me do a little bit of carving, just this head. Let's, let's cut this head out. I'm not going to start in the face just yet, also. No, oh, okay, we can do this. This is fine. When Ishikawa-san was coming in a few minutes ago, there was a, a bit of, you know, a, a, a vivid conversation. There was confusion. When I had taken her paper out of the freezer this morning, I found something that I was confused by. Last week, she did a test run of our upcoming New Year card. And those test prints were on my desk. She left, uh, what was it, Tuesday or something. And she had done the test of the New Year's cards and left them on my desk. 
I knew she was coming back to, to do work today on the different project. As I mentioned, it was the tsuru. But this morning, up in the fridge, the freezer, when I was taking paper out of the freezer, I was taking out, I took out Dejan's paper for the ED prints. I saw Ishikawa-san had two packages in there. And one was marked tsuru, and one was marked nengajo. And I thought, when I looked at that, then she and I have had a miscommunication. She did, last week, the test print of the New Year's card, but we weren't going to assign her the job of printing them. That was going to go to somebody else, to Mitamura-san. But when I saw her paper in the freezer this morning, I saw a big, thick stack marked New Year's card. So I thought, we've got some wires crossed, and she has prepared some paper for printing the New Year's card, when actually she won't be doing it. So I was a bit worried that when she got here this morning, I'm going to have to tell her some bad news. Ishikawa-san, I'm sorry, but the New Year's card job has gone to somebody else. It'll be Mitamura-san that's doing that. I was really worried about this when she was going to show up this morning. So as you saw, when she did show, we had a conversation there. And partway along, you must have heard me laughing in relief. Because that package of paper in there, marked New Year's card, wasn't the Mokohankan New Year's card. It's her own. It didn't say so, so I didn't know. It's her own New Year's card, nothing to do with me. So she will be printing that somewhere in the next few days. If they condemn the building, you have to save the Shachihoko. I am going to try. I'm going to try. I may not have any control over this. This is not mine. The building is not mine. I, I think the landlady doesn't know that exists, but I don't know. I am going to try and get the Shachihoko. I'm also going to try and catch the Onigawara. There's a demon tile on the front of the building, which is beautifully made. Also, I want to try and catch some of the, uh, what's it called, kazarimono, some of the ceilings. I would like to try and preserve some of those if the building is, uh, is uh, condemned. None of this will be under my control, none at all. It depends on the level of damage that the building is going to encounter from the earthquake that's going to take us down. Mm. Well, there will be no question of stealing. It'll have to be done opening with permission, you know. And what I will do, like, if this happens, step one, earthquake, step two, con condemnation by the uh, authorities, the landlady now will be the main actor here, so we will talk to her, we will have to move out immediately, and as part of the discussion with her about moving out, we will be ending our relationship with her at that point, because there's no chance of rebuilding the building, so it'll be goodbye, and at that point I will be asking her or whatever about stuff we can take with her. And she already knows I'm interested in that umbrella ceiling that's up there. So what I will do, I'll use words like, Suzuki-san, when we're leaving, can, you know, can we take out some of the stuff like that old ceiling and stuff, stuff like this, bits and pieces of the decoration, can we take those out? And she will almost certainly say, yeah, yeah, do whatever you want. The, the deconstruction is going to start next Monday and get that stuff out before. And that would be my clue to get the shachihoko and to get that tile. So I will just say something like that. Can I take the umbrella ceiling? You know, you know I like that. Can I take that ceiling and some other, you know, decorative stuff, you know? And at that point, she will either say, don't you dare touch that chachihoko, or she'll say, yeah, whatever. We'll see. So I'm getting my story prepared. How much does it weigh? No, 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 nothing. This is not a giant statue. This is a bunch of tiles. That chachihoko is made up of about six or seven or eight tiles tied together so the building has just sort of a little concrete block thing there, and there's tiles placed on and around it that make up the shachihoko shape. It's not like Nagoya Castle, where it's a huge thing that gets lifted and placed on top. It's just a collection of half a dozen ceramic tiles, the same as normal roof tiles. No big deal. I could take it down in 15 minutes. No, 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 no. It's not solid at all. I don't want any of this to happen. I just want there to be no massive earthquake 
in the coming years, and I just want to peacefully keep doing our business here. My God, that would be a massive disruption to our business, let alone the, the danger of people dying here. This building, you know, could come down, there could be fires. The earthquake we're sort of all expecting will, is going to be a devastating event, you know. I shouldn't speak so casually about it when we have our earthquake next year, next week, you know. careful what you wish for. Of course, I don't want that at all. But it's the only way forward for this property. The, the property cannot be developed under normal circumstances. The, the footprint is too small. It can only be developed in collaboration. The two or three neighboring buildings would have to be bought out together by somebody who could then put up a larger building. This footprint of this building is too small to allow new construction. Carving this thing, you know, the last few days, even like when I'm on the stream or off the stream, it sort of makes no difference. I'm very, very, very cognizant people are watching. And what I mean is, I mean, at the moment you guys are watching, but even when the stream was turned off, everybody's watching because part of the thing about this series, of course, is that Dave has traced and has recarved hoax sized lines. And I was blabbing about that the other day. Every line must sing, every dot must dance, or, or something like that. I forget what I actually said. So this finished print, it seems to me, is going to come under a very, very, very huge, tight, close level of inspection. Because we're going to have to show, there's Hoxai's sketch, there's what Dave did with it. And we're going to get line by line comparisons among experts, you know, British Museum experts and people here and, and general visitors. So every single thing that I'm carving, this little corner right here, you know, everyone I'm trying to think, people are watching, posterity is watching, be careful, try and make this dance. And of course, the more self-conscious you get, the more difficult it is to make it happen. So. And this is January's print, it's supposed to be sent to the waiting subscribers on January 1st. <laughs> Nothing left to do but laugh, can't cry. Nothing left to do but laugh. Okay, 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 okay. We have our space for the calligraphy too. There's calligraphy going here. That's going to take a while. And <laughs> no subscribers yet, so no problem, <laughs> right? Our main business model <laughs> doesn't exist. Subscriptions were 47% uh, of our income this year. Next year, zero, who knows? Quite a few minutes for the show and tell. Someone's saying, how do we avoid eye neck strain? I don't know. My only uh, discussion about strains of wrist and back and everything else is, in recent years, I change up my work. I don't sit here, usually I don't sit here for 8, 10, 12 hours all day doing the same thing. Dave's only, I don't know, advice on the strains question is that keep changing things up. Having said that, back when I was a full-time carver and printer, I would do 
printing for 12, 14 hours a day. I mean, get up in the morning, do three, four hours, have lunch, come in the afternoon, do three, four hours, you know, come back in the evening. So yeah, I have been doing this very intensely. Back in over my, over my printing bench, the, the roof is a hung ceiling, is, is a, there's a, a low area of the roof, and I have a, a bar very heavily screwed to the wall above my Ome bench, and printing one, two hours, whatever, feel a bit of strain, grab the bar, which I can't see, and I use the bar to pull myself up and down, pull up and down, pull up and down, like some light pull-ups, just in place exercise. That helps. Someone's asking, what about those small prints I got in the mail? I, what about those small prints I got in the mail? We are talking about yesterday, today? I showed some prints last week. I don't know. Anyway, let's look at a couple more of these. As we are, this is our Suribono albums, the prints that I made from 1998, nine, no, no, 1999, and this is the fourth album we're looking at now. So these are the ones I made in 2002, exactly 20 years ago. And again, for those who don't know what were those stories with these albums, I made a set of 50 prints over a period of five years, and the idea being that I would train myself in pretty much every possible variation of carving and printing within the traditional Japanese, within the traditions. And I did that. There are 50 prints, and as I said, you name it, it's in here. This kind of gradation, that kind of gradation, this kind of carving, that kind of carving. Just, just thin lines, thick lines, wiggly lines, smooth lines, you name it. A good variation of different artists to try and teach me the feel for each different person's line work. It was my five years of a very, very, very vivid, strict, super strict apprenticeship. Way stricter than any master or workshop could have or would have ever put on me. I trained myself because I wasn't able to find a good workshop in which I could get trained. This one is Zeshin, Shibata Zeshin. Most of the other prints you're going to see in these albums are what they call ukiyo-e. People are confused. They think ukiyo-e means Japanese prints. It doesn't. Ukiyo-e are a style of work. We have ukiyo-e paintings. It's nothing to do with carving and printing. I'm not going to get into a long philosophy thing here, but if you look on Wikipedia, what ukiyo-e means, it's pictures of the floating world. And it was about a, a, a lifestyle, kind of a horrible word, but a lifestyle and an ethic that was popular in those days. The print we're looking at now, this is a Japanese woodblock print, exactly the same kind of print as we see in the ukiyo-e style but it's nothing to do with ukiyo-e. As you can see, it's an imitation of a painting. Zeshin actually, was his profession was he was a designer for lacquer work. And also, he was apparently quite, you know, uh, quite in demand as a designer for everything. Kimono patterns, prints, as we see, lacquer work, you name it. And this is one of his designs which was made in his day as a woodblock print, so he must have been commissioned to do a bunch of designs for some prints, and he turned out this one. And when I say it's not ukiyo-e, I mean the theme is nothing to do with it. It's not courtesan's landscape, whatever. It's a brush painting. It's closer to what you would call a haiga, the kind of painting that would accompany haiku poetry. And this is done so nice. Look at the gradation. Who prints this? You see defects here and there. You see this chip on this thing. You see rough carving. This is not me hacking away at it. This is a reproduction as closely as I could of each dotted line of this thing. You can see we have scratch carving. The lines are not smooth and clean. After being carved, they were chop, 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 bang, 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 chop, 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 bang, bang, bang. They were roughed up. This is a kasure body scratch carving, also sometimes referred to as sabi bori, rust carving, because it looks rusty and then screechy. We have the same thing around the rest of the picture. Then something very interesting about this, I've got to toss the idea out, not so much related to the printmaking part of this, but what are we looking at? This is the famous 
Japanese cultural concept of koi nobori. It's a carp, and it's climbing a waterfall. Where I come from in Canada, there are lots of fish that do this. Lots of fish. Canada is famous. Hokkaido here is famous for do this. Fish that come from the sea, they're born up in rivers, go down to the sea, and they come back to climb the river to their birth spot. They lay their eggs and die. These are salmon. Koi, the fish we know as the carp, doesn't do that. It doesn't do that. It never has done it. It never does it. How on earth the Japanese came up with this cultural creation of koi nobori. Yeah, we've had this conversation before, whatever. The print came up this time, and I don't know. Carp don't climb waterfalls. This one does. Okay, we've got a few minutes, one more. This one has a few things to talk about before. We send it before we go away. This one actually has a ton of things to talk about. This one's a reproduction of a print from the early, early, early days of ukiyo-e. I'm not quite sure who designed it. It might be Kiyonobu, it might be Kiyomasu. I don't remember. It's before color printing was invented, this particular print. And I carved it with one wood block, one piece of wood, copying the original. This was not Dave's idea, I'm just copying the original. I traced the design, put it on a piece of wood, and carved it. And this is the wood block part of what you're seeing. This is a wood block print, very vivid style, early vigorous drawing, super wonderful, vigorous, energetic flown lines, printed in rich, thick black pigment. We're talking an original maybe 1720, something like that, early 1700s, before color printing was invented. We're seeing Danjiro. This is Danjiro, one of the Danjiro clan actors, because this is their mas, the sake cup, nested sake cups. And then the, the colors, because they hadn't invented color printing, the colors came on by hand. And I made, for my Suruno albums, 200 copies of this. And Dave sat there and mixed paint and colored by hand with a brush every one of the 200 copies. That's the way it was done before color printing was invented. They hadn't figured out how to use the system of registration marks and cutting colors on blocks. And they hadn't figured out how to print actual nice, clean colors. So the original was all painted by hand and Dave did the same thing, painted them by hand. We have this one. In fact, both of these prints we've looked at today, this Kiyonobu one and the one I just showed you by Zeshin, they are both in our actual Mook Hong Kong catalog. And the current group of the ones we have here were done, I think, was it done by Dei Chan or done by Ayumi san <coughs> And when I assigned her this job, she didn't really know much about this. I gave her the job. There's a bunch of wood blocks, and here's the, the bunch of wood blocks, meaning a wood block, and the paper. I mean, son, here you go. This is, uh, this is uh, an urushie. It's called, actually, it's called a lacquer picture because the, the black is done with a lacquer, shiny lacquer. I can't quite catch the light here. And she said, where's the color blocks? And I'm like, no. Get your brushes out. And she's like, no way. And I'm like, yes way. You gotta do this. This is part of your job. So away we go. The ones in the catalog are still hand colored. Yes, this is the point. We're selling this print as it was. We haven't carved color blocks for it. The ones we have in our catalog are hand painted by Aimi san or Dei Chan, whoever's done the latest batch. I don't know. Who's this? So it must be Mori-san. No, it's Ken-san. He's here first. Today we're going to have Ken and Mori-san visiting us uh, in the shop. The one guy, cold out there, is it? Yes, it is. You're bundled up like Alaska weather. <laughs> this is nothing yet. We've got two months to go, you know? Yeah. Okay, it looks like it's time for me to get out of here. We've seen these two prints. I've got to get ready now with the shop, with these two guys, to get the shop open. Are the latter people gone? 
Ladder's gone. So my story earlier about the decorations for the New Year's, that hasn't happened yet. So that'll still be happening. I guess it is a bit too early, December 17th. I assumed they were going to hang their straw ropes. That's obviously not going to happen just yet. OK, thank you very much, guys. I know I've tried to keep relaxed here, although there are an awful lot of things going on in the background here. Thanks for your patience with us. And uh, while we dig through a lot of the things we're trying to dig through. It's Saturday morning. I'll see you in two more days, Monday morning for us here. Look at this, the street's getting busy. As you can see, it's still pretty much masking, you know. There are the occasional people walking outside with no mask, but for the most part, Tokyo is still masked up. And anybody coming in the shop is also asked to mask up. We have a box of masks on the counter if somebody doesn't have their own. It's still a masking time here. Okay, thank you very much. I'll see you in a couple of days. Signing off. Bye for now.